Hi, Danny. Hey. Hi, um, can we just check on the injury news? Are there any fresh injuries after Villa and any chance of Marcus or, or uh, Tyler being available? No, no, no. We are in the same situation we were, I would say, 30 something hours before. Uh, we, we don't lose anyone, we don't recover anyone. So uh, it's going to be uh, the, 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 the same players available and uh, uh, we'll have to choose from there, yes. And it's back to the Midlands after going to Villa on Sunday. Um, you saw Wolves play, didn't you, on Saturday night? What did you think of them? I think they are doing a very good season, uh, probably like us, no? The last results haven't been to their side, uh, but uh, I think they are slowly, slowly recovering the important players for them, very important players, and I I expect some changes in their, their lineup because I think they will recover some some important players and we have to be ready to face a, a very good team. And it's you against Gary O'Neill, the former Bournemouth manager. Um, is it wrong to personalise this match or is it just another match for you? No, for us it's just uh, uh, a match where we have uh, chances to get more points. We have a very difficult schedule uh, the, the, the last games of the season and we have to try to take every opportunity we have. Uh, we, we face a team that is very close to us and uh, obviously it's always uh, important no and and and, and uh, we are uh, fighting for for positions so that's the, the the important thing of the game i would say it's fair to say though that he's done a great job at villa yeah absolutely you've done a great job replacing him here yeah i, th I think uh, both both seasons have been very good uh, for bo both clubs but uh, we still haven't finished you know we want to finish strong and we would to to finish with uh, good uh, good uh, sensations, uh, looking also for for next season, and uh, now has been a difficult preparation. Just two days with the both travels coming back. Now we go today straight away, and uh, I hope we are we are uh, ready again for tomorrow because it's gonna be a, another strong fight uh, like like the Villa one. Yeah, there are five games left. I mean, what is the target now? Your record. Premier League points tally is 46. I mean, that looks realistic, doesn't it? And your record finish is ninth. So do you think you can beat both of those? Yeah, I think uh, especially the the points. No, We've been focusing on that in the last, uh, last weeks. I think uh, uh, it's achievable, but it's going to be difficult because we have to to beat a strong, a strong teams and teams that are in a good form, the ones that we are facing the last game. So... Uh, we will have to be good if we want to, to beat the, the, the points total, yeah. Um, Dominic Slanky has 18 goals. He has a genuine chance of winning the Golden Boot, which is remarkable because his best ever Premier League season before was six goals. I mean, can he do it? It's going to be difficult because the, the, the other forwards are also in a very good form. They are scoring goals, but uh, he will try for sure. I think he's uh, performing really well, really consistent during all the season. I think uh, he has uh, given us very good performances since the beginning, and uh, I will not ask only for the for the goals. I'm very happy, and I'm I'm also sure that he's very happy if he helps us get points, and even if he doesn't score more. Do you think he's getting the credit he deserves? All the talk is about Cole Palmer, but Slanky is only one goal behind. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult because obviously. Uh, it's normal that the, the, the attention goes to the top teams, to the ones that are fighting for the titles, for the Champions League. Uh, but uh, I think uh, probably it adds merit, no, that Solanke has scored 18 goals for Bournemouth because no, we are scoring goals this season. But we we normally we will finish with less goals than other teams that teams that are fighting for for the title. How much do you think you've helped him as a player? I think he. I wouldn't say he has improved a lot this season. I think he was really good from the first day arrived here. I think uh, he's a very complete player, obviously adapts very well to the way we want to play because he helps us a lot also uh, out of possession. And uh, I'm happy that he's receiving some recognition, but he has to continue because at the end, uh, we only normally we look back last games, last... And he's, I think, in a good form, and I hope he finishes strong the the, the season for him personally. Yeah. Can we ask you two about Zabani? Um, 
He's played all 33 Premier League games. He's not missed a minute. You will not sub him. He's been incredible. He's only 21. Um, why has he been so good? I think Saba, uh, I, I really think he has improved this season a lot. If you see Saba from the beginning of the season, he was a very good player, but obviously with his age so young, probably he was making more mistakes and uh, uh, probably he didn't have the confidence that uh, you can see that he has now. And uh, he has to continue this improvement because uh, he gives us uh, a lot of insurance at the back. He's defending the very difficult wo uh, duels against tough opposition and he's he's winning a lot. He's winning a lot. I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy because I, I can see how much he wants to improve, how, how, how much he demands uh, to himself. And uh, I'm... I'm, I'm really happy because I think he has a, a, a still a better future ahead, yes. It's very unusual for a Premier League player, an outfield player, not to be sub though. Could he go all 38 games and play every minute? I think he could, yeah. I think he could because he's someone that he's physically very strong, very robust, very robust. If uh, Saba complains about something, it's because whew, it's, a, it's an injury there. He's not that someone that comes and normally he trains every day, full trainings. And uh, I think he's winning confidence on the ball. He's being more brave in the build-up. And I, 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 we are really lucky to have him, yes. And the fans love him. I mean, you've heard the song, uh, Whitney Houston, I want to dance with somebody. He's become, I want to dance with Sabiani. Um, <laughs> you like the song? I don't really understand what they are uh, singing. I know that it's uh, something about Saba. But I think it's good, it's good, uh, especially for him, no? Uh, he came here, I think, 18 months ago, and uh, for sure he, there has been an adaptation. Probably past season wasn't easy with him because he had a, also a, some injury concerns and he didn't play as, as much as he wanted, for sure. But I think uh, this season has been uh, really good. He feels also... Uh, uh, at the end, the confidence gives you more leadership. He starts talking more. He speaks perfect English. He can communicate very well with the teammates. And uh, he has to continue. He has to continue because he still has room to improve. That is, uh, considering his age and his level, is really good for him. Yeah. And, and considering two friends and family back in Ukraine are obviously caught up in the war, does he talk about that much? Yeah, we, we, we don't talk too much, but sometimes we touch it. And uh, he, he remembers things when he was playing for, there for, for Dynamo Kiev, how things started. And uh, he thinks that the best thing he can do for for his friends, for his family, for his country is to to play as best as he can, to help from 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 here. And uh, uh, sometimes we ask him how he feels, but I think he's quite mature for his age. He has lived a lot of things uh, for a. Uh, 21 year old player and I think he does quite well with it yeah just finally um, obviously there's a big story involving Nottingham Forest um, I don't know whether you saw the penalty claims against Everton but none of them were given they've questioned the integrity of uh, a VAR official what have you made of, of that and the, and the, the incidents uh, we always complain no? when we think that uh, the referee hasn't gone to our side and we feel it's not fair I think we you ask me here, and normally I try to to give my my point of view, and uh, things that we have to to accept. As managers, it's difficult because they cost you points, they can cost you your position. They, uh, but uh, I think we have to be really demanding with the referees because there is a lot in play, and there are some limits that probably you cannot you cannot cross. But with the tension, with the Everything that is in, in play sometimes is, is, is difficult. But on those incidents, if you'd been the manager on Sunday in that game and you'd had three shouts like that all denied, how angry would you have been? For sure I would be. Yeah, for sure I would be angry. I was angry the other day against United. I think it's normal. Uh, when when uh, you think it hasn't been correct, uh, the decision and it goes against you, it's difficult to accept. But... Uh, it will always happen and it's uh, frustrating, but you have to, to finish accepting it and, 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 and try to, to demand uh, to the referees. I know that it's very difficult to, to continue improving. Thank you. Thank you. 
with Zaba, how has he uh, reacted to the weekend when Ollie Watkins must have given him his toughest four or five minutes of the season? Yeah, I think he was mm, really, really good, Zaba. Really, really good the other day. The other day against Villa. First half was amazing. Amazing. Elite level. First half he did against Ollie Watkins. And I think after he received the yellow card in the, I think, 55th minute, it was much more difficult for him. Much more difficult because we were trusting him probably too much. We were not helping him because we wanted to keep our 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 pressure really, really high. And it's working very well in the first half, but after we received the yellow cards for Adam Smith, for Marcos, after Sava, we couldn't keep the same level of uh, aggressiveness on the press, and then you start uh, leaving uh, more more spaces and having to defend situations where first half we were attacking them, and it changed a little bit the dynamic of the of the game that yellow card. But I think he dealt really really well with the game. So is that something he needs to learn to deal with better, playing with a yellow card, or is it more of a team thing? Yeah, I think we we didn't help him enough. I think uh, we should have helped him more. But we, I think it's a matter of also the teammate knowing each other. No, we we felt like in the first half he was he was amazing. He was winning every duel, and against the difficult opposition, and. Uh, the moment where probably you cannot be as aggressive, you have the yellow card, you have to give, it doesn't look a lot, but just one, two more min- meters is enough against Oli Watkins, against Diaby, against these kind of players. And I think there we should read better the, the situations to not be as, as aggressive and probably be a little bit more compact and help uh, our center backs a little bit more because also Marcos was with, uh, with yellow and uh, we could, couldn't be as, as aggressive as we were. He arrived during Gary O'Neill's only transfer window here, as did Dungo Watara. I wonder what you've made of his season. He's only managed, I think, one assist, one goal, both in the same game. Has he had the season you were hoping for? At the end, uh, we have uh, big expectations for from from Dungo. No, uh, I think uh, uh, he has very uh, difficult opposition because we have very good wingers and they have been playing very well with uh, Tav, Antoine, uh, uh, Sini, uh, I think Brucey until until Christmas. So it hasn't been easy for him to to get the minutes. But also he has given us very good things. He has played for me very, very well as a left back, very, very well before, before he had the, the injury and he had to stop. I think he, has, he hasn't had continuity during the season. Because when he has found a little bit of form, he has got injured. He has had a couple of bad injuries at the beginning and now after Christmas. That probably has hasn't given him the chance no, to 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 get more minutes. And the jobs Gary O'Neill has done here and, and at Wolves have both come without a pre-season because of circumstances when he's when he's been given the jobs. How how much extra credit does he deserve for that? How key are those weeks in pre-season? I think uh, you have to value it a lot, a lot, because uh, he did very well here, past season, very well. First year after promotion is always very difficult. He has done it very well in Wolves. No? I think, uh, uh, obviously, to have a pre-season is always an advantage, because you have time, let's say, to make mistakes before it really counts. And uh, I'm sure they will be even more more dangerous next season after uh, uh, another proper pre-season. And uh, it makes me think that we also have to be better, like because other teams that uh, will continue improving. Yes. Sitting in this seat on Friday, I confused myself, jumped the gun, talked about Lewis Cook and his red card against Wolves. How much did that surprise you? That sort of rush of blood to him and. How he reacted afterwards? It said he said it bothered him for weeks. Yeah, it surprised me because Luis uh, normally, you know, has his experience is 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 quite also mature and uh, he doesn't react normally like this. It was just l- lose nothing, a fraction of a second. It was even a proper hit, you know. But so that he made a mistake, he realized straight away as soon as he was leaving the pitch, he knew 
what uh, had happened. Unfortunately for us, we we finished losing that game with with ten players and and the good side is that when he came after the the suspension, he came in a really good form with a really spot on mentality and he has been playing really well since there. He deserves great credit for that, doesn't he? He's been one of the players of the season, reacting the way he did, looking to make it right, I suppose. Yeah, I think he realised it straight away in, in an important moment of the season that he had made a mistake, probably. Uh, uh, it was like a motivation, so now I, now I have to do extra. I have to really give everything a little bit more and focus and and uh, probably has has served him no, to come back uh, with the correct mentality. And uh, like we were talking with uh, about Saba, no? I think he has been uh, really, really consistent all the all the season, different positions, different uh, uh, teammates uh, uh, around him. And uh, I hope he, he finishes also strong.